Hi, I'm Cody DeLong. I'm here on behalf of the Sedona Art Center. We're making this video today to help you who are going to join us on the river trip for artists. Uh, just show you a little bit about how to pack, what to bring for our annual river trip. I've, I've led the river trip for the Sedona Art Center for the last few years and I've come up with a uh, kind of my river trip checklist. Uh, this is available on the Sedona Art Center's website to do with the river trip. and. Uh, we, we get a lot of questions every year about what to pack, what to bring, especially if you've never been down the river. It's kind of a daunting task to pack for this trip. And most people bring way too much gear, which is a problem because you're loading and unloading the boat every day. Your fellow artists are helping to unload the boat every day. And uh, so hopefully this video will help you understand what to bring, what you need, and a little bit how to pack. Okay, so the first thing everybody wants to know is what do I bring for clothes on this river trip? And you don't have to buy a lot of gear. Uh, our outfitter provides us with three dry bags for the trip. Uh, you have two large dry bags. They're maybe this big around, and when they're rolled down, maybe this tall. One of those contains your sleep kit. That's your sleeping bag and your uh, sheet. The other large dry bag is for your clothes. And then there's a smaller dry bag, maybe so big around, so tall, and that's your day bag that you'll have access to on the raft. All right. So starting with the clothes, um, it's really handy to put your clothes in a small, lightweight duffel bag. This will slide in and out of your your your, your, day, your dry bag. And uh, believe it or not, this is my clothes for the whole week. Uh, in this bag. Uh, on my checklist again, you'll see what I've got here. Generally, we, I bring uh, two pairs of long pants, uh, something a little lighter, and something a little heavier in case it's cool in the evening. Uh, we'll bring two pairs of shorts. I got a quick dry pair that I wear on the river, and then just a regular pair of shorts as well. A uh, couple of t-shirts. Uh, a long sleeve, kind of a button-down shirt is nice. You can quickly throw over you if you get cold at night. Uh, I've got another long sleeve shirt that I'll use sometimes for painting in. And then also, you want to bring uh, a nice sweatshirt or a fleece jacket or something. And if you wear this at night, in addition to the two-piece rain suit, uh, that serves, that doubles as a jacket. That should keep you pretty warm. Also, of course, uh, you know, we got socks and underwear, and then I bring uh, a little mesh bag as well, and uh, you know, if you get halfway through the week and nobody wants to sit next to you, you can go down to the river and wash some of your clothes. Alright, the next duffel is your bathroom duffel. Uh, this and the clothes duffel generally will go together in the dry bag provided by the outfitter, so they don't have to be waterproof. Uh, in my case, it's just an old stuff sack. Uh, in there, I've got my my bathroom kit. Uh, I like to bring a little pillow, and also a washcloth and a towel. And then also at night, I, I bring a little stocking cap if it gets cooler. It's nice to have that to sleep in. So. In the bathroom kit, <clears throat> the most important thing that I tell people to keep in their bathroom kit is your headlamp. Uh, there's nothing worse than waking up in the middle of the night, you're fumbling around in the tent, you don't know where you are, you got to use the bathroom, and you can't see. So I always keep my headlamp in the bathroom kit. All right. um, I put some other stuff like my soaps and lotions, keep those in Ziploc bags. Uh, any allergy meds or evening meds, vitamins, uh, keep some tweezers, snail clippers, that kind of stuff. And just toothpaste, toothbrush, some lip balm. Just all the basic stuff for camping. Uh, in my case, it's pretty light. And just keep it simple so you can find everything. And again, that all just goes in one bag, and that bag goes 
in your dry bag with your clothes. Uh, remember that you're not going to have access to this stuff during the middle of the day when we're on the boat. Uh, these bags, these larger dry bags, go in the bottom of the boat uh, and they're covered with tarps and tied down with ropes, so you won't have access to that during the day. So if you have any midday meds, you want to keep those in your day bag, which we'll talk about next. And the Outfitter provides three day bags, two large ones and a smaller one. The smaller one's the one you're going to have access to during the day. That clips on top of the boat, right where you're sitting. So you want to have the items you're going to need during the day in your day bag. Again, I use a small little duffel. This slides in and out of the dry bag really easily. And I can just pull it out and get at the items I need right away as we're bouncing down the river. Um, the first most important thing you want to have in your day bag is your rain suit. I highly recommend a two-piece rain suit. Um, this isn't anything high-tech, it's just a vinyl rain suit, uh, pants and top, and uh, you know, you, you need something decent, not, not the really cheap, you know, emergency poncho, those always tear, but it doesn't have to be expensive either. Just make sure you've got the rain suit. There are days where we go through several rapids in a row, and if you get soaked and you get cold, you know, that's no fun. So. Make sure you got your rain suit in your day bag. Other items in your day bag that you want to have are uh, obviously a camera. Um, I've got a waterproof one after ruining a couple in the past. However, if you don't have to have waterproof, uh, you can get a little camera bag. It's got like a little lens in it. That's good too. Um, but you know, you got two enemies on the river. You got water and you got sand. Sand gets in everything, so uh, you want to keep your camera out of the elements as best you can. Right. Uh, a lot of people like to bring a river map. They sell these waterproof river maps at the lodge up there. Uh, pad and paper, for notes. You want to have at least two <coughs> pair of sunglasses with straps on them. Uh, just, I just bring cheap sunglasses. You can buy the straps also at the lodge. I often bring a little do-rag, bandana. Uh, you want an extra hat with a hat clip. The hat clip clips to the collar of your shirt, so a big gust of wind comes along, blows your hat off, you still have it. All right. um, another item a lot of people like, including myself, is uh, aqua socks. These are neoprene socks. Uh, Again, if we're going through a lot of rapids and we're getting really wet or it happens to be a cold, rainy day or something, um, my feet get cold easy, so I'll just reach in and throw these on. Those can also be purchased at the lodge. Um, I always bring an additional trash bag. And uh, if you want to bring a small pair of binoculars, or I just bring a monocular, small monocular uh, as well. A lot of times we see a lot of wildlife. Uh, bighorn sheep will be up on the rocks, or you'll see a peregrine falcon or something. Uh, if you want to get a closer look, that's nice to have. And uh, of course, don't forget your sunscreen. And don't make the mistake I did one year and buy sunscreen that isn't waterproof, because that's worthless. So make sure you've got a big bottle of sunscreen with you in your day bag at all times. Okay, a few other items to bring on the river. Uh, Sometimes in the evenings it can get a little cool. Uh, you might want a pair of shoes. I just bring an old pair of tennis shoes. It doesn't have to be expensive river shoes or anything, but it most likely will get wet and dirty, so just an old pair of tennis shoes. Most of the time on the river, I'm just living in my sandals. So, you know, a nice pair of sandals is great to have. Uh, you don't want to bring more than one pair of shoes, though. They take up a lot of space and a lot of weight in your bag. Uh, one pair is really enough. Another thing you want to have is of course a water bottle and it's great if you can have some kind of carabiner or something attached to that. This clips onto the ropes on the raft during the day. Uh, you don't want to depend on the little strap that comes with a lot of these bottles. It breaks off, your bottle sinks, and you're not a happy camper anymore. So get yourself something with a carabiner that you can clip on. Another item is your sleeping pad. Now the outfitter provides us with a foam pad. Uh, however, if you're a side sleeper like me, it's not quite enough. So I like to also bring my own little supplemental pad. Uh, you notice this thing isn't real big, 
and that's what you want. You don't need a big car camping mattress. Just a little ex something extra to go with the pad that's provided by the outfitter. Now, this is an inflatable pad. It's got foam in it, and you just open these up and kind of self-inflates. You only need one that's maybe an inch or inch and a half thick, and they don't have to be real wide. Uh, again, this is just going to go on top of the foam pad that the, the outfitter is providing for us. And then you still also have your sleeping bag, so you end up with a pretty nice bed that way. Uh, and another item I like to bring is a little Tupperware, something, you know, uh, waterproof. And in here, I'll keep, uh, you know, some spare lip balm, uh, extra batteries for my headlamp, extra batteries for your camera. Make sure you charge those. Uh, this is also where we put our cell phones for the week. We turn these off the day we hit the river. We don't turn them back on until we come off the river. There's no cell service down there anyway, and you might as well take advantage of having a whole week of no cell phone and no email. How often do you get to do that? Um, I bring a couple extra Ziploc bags. You never know when you're gonna need those. And uh, you know, you can have a more expensive uh, box, but Tupperware works pretty good. Uh, the other thing you want to do is bring some cash. Um, at the end of the trip, it's customary to tip the guides, generally between $100 and $200. Also, you may want some last minute items before we leave on the river. You might want a little extra beer or wine, uh, you know, a hat strap or some aqua socks or something. So, uh, and you're also on your own for breakfast the morning that we launch. So you want to bring some cash. Uh, also, the a uh, place where we park our cars in Flagstaff, if you're driving, uh, they only take cash, not credit cards. So you want to have a little cash on hand as well. And I just keep all that stuff in one convenient place, and it just gets stowed away, usually in my clothes bag. Uh, I even put a little strap on it, and uh, we're good to go. Okay, and the most important thing for us artists is, of course, our painting gear. Um, I have my own dry bag because I go down the river a lot. You don't have to have your own. You could use some trash bags. You might even be able to fit your paper towels and your wet panel boxes in with your clothes bag or your sleep kit in one of those dry bags. Um, but just to show you what I've got, I've uh, got my dry bag. This has my paper towels and my wet panel boxes in it. And then of course, this is my backpack that has all my painting gear in it, which we'll talk about more in a moment. Okay, in here it's simply, I generally bring two, three rolls of paper towels for the week, and then I also have some wet panel boxes, alright, different types of wet panel box, most of you guys are familiar with these, uh, keep your panels in there, and we all like to keep our artwork dry, as well as our paper towels, so that's why I use the, the uh, dry bag. Okay, for most of you guys who do a lot of plein air painting, this may be a little redundant, but every year I get some questions about the painting gear, so we're going to go through that real quickly as well. Uh, you want to make sure you got your big dumb painting hat. You're not a real plein air painter without that. Uh, you want something with a strap on it as well. All my Prashad box and tripod and everything fit in this backpack, which is really great, because then I can hike hands-free, I can have my camera and whatnot. Uh, it's not terribly heavy, and it's pretty compact. Um, Pushad box is really the best setup on the river because they're lighter and smaller. I don't recommend bringing a full-size French easel if you can help it. They're a little vulnerable and heavy. Uh, Soltec easels are not great because the legs always jam in the sand. I've seen that time and time again. Uh, the tried and true Pushad is really great. I'll set mine up real quick if you're not familiar with this setup. It's just a camera tripod with a paint box on it. In this bag I've got also my paints. Uh, these are carry the big tubes and I'll throw a couple of rags in there, kind of wrap the paints in those so they don't poke holes in each other. 
Uh, got my brushes. I like to bring a cloth bag, but you can use a plastic bag as well. Here's the shot box. And I just hang all my stuff off that. Uh, also, your waterproof turp jar. And that's my basic setup. The panel goes here. Um, a note about the turp jar, you guys want to bring one of these with you if you're an oil painter. Um, I will have some additional turps for you on the trip, but uh, don't forget to bring this. And as you can see, all this fits in the backpack nice and simple. Okay, so once again, here's all the gear. It's not a huge pile of gear. Uh, this is ideal. You want to keep it light and simple. Remember, we're hauling this stuff off and on the boat every day. We're all helping each other. So if all of us have a ton of gear, it becomes a huge job. So try and keep it pared down. Go over the checklist. If you have any questions about what to bring or how to pack it, you can contact Debbie or Vince at the Art Center or me, myself. Um, another question always comes up about alcohol. You're, you're welcome to bring alcohol. Uh, if you want to bring beer, no glass on the river, it has to be in cans, and we keep those cold in drag bags alongside the boat. The river is quite cold and it keeps the beer pretty cold. Uh, wine, same thing, it can be in a box or you can transfer your wine to a metal or plastic container. Same thing for hard liquor, just put it in metal or plastic, no glass allowed on the river. Okay, this trip begins and ends in Flagstaff. Uh, we meet at a storage facility and we leave our cars there for those of us who are driving and then we take the shuttle up to Marble Canyon where we spend one night in the lodge. We'll have a dinner there. Uh, so you need to bring some cash for that as well and then you get your dry bags that evening so you get to load all this gear into your dry bags and then the next morning we launch on the river. So uh, I hope you'll join us. It'll be the opportunity of a lifetime. You're going to come back with some great paintings tons of reference photos, it's well worth it, and uh, contact the Sedona Arts Center and sign up today. Hope to see you on the river. My name is Cody DeLong, my website is CodyDeLong.com. You can find my river trip checklist on that site as well. Thank you.